Hey guys, thanks for joining me today uh, for part two of um, our look into how to write a sad piece of orchestral music. Um, so I hope you learned a little bit as well about my workflow from the first one. And we're just going to dive right in now and um, and see what I've done in this new um, this new layout for this orchestral piece. Okay, hi guys. So uh, we're in Logic now. Um, as you can see, after last week, I went away and um, I've arranged this piece. So I've um, took a lot of time into sculpting it and whatnot. There's no um, no effects yet. What we're going to do today is we're just going to have a look at what I've done and um, and how I've done it, so that you can go away and you can take some of these techniques that I do and maybe try them out in your in in your situation. Um, and a lot of my ways, they're not going to you know they're not going to be um, a snug fit for your way of working um, so just take what you can but yeah let's just get dive straight into it so uh, we'll start at the top and we'll and we'll go down okay so here you can see the piano part that I did last week I've, all I've done is I've added a labs piano to it so if I just play them together And this is it without the lab's piano. And with it. So just layering that piano just gave it a lot more width. And I really love the lab's piano. I don't actually think that there's many pianos out there that can beat it, um, especially for that soft, um, melodic feel. Uh, we, were, we added a violin swells to it, didn't we? Um, and that's just adding a drone. I've done nothing to it. This is it just droning along. And that's just adding a little bit more of, um, of ambience to the piece. Now moving on to the strings, this is where I spent most of my time to get it sounding this good. And I was, I was quite meticulous. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna play you the end and then we'll have a look at what I did. Okay, so you can hear there they're really lush as well and there's some harmony that I've that I've altered as well from what I actually played in so um the last um, cadence there is is a perfect cadence in a minor key whereas I finished off um, with a perfect cadence in a major key last week so you know we wanted to keep it as sad as possible what I what I played in was sad but it was a little bit more melancholy so um, you know I, I made sure afterwards that I went uh, went through and instead of doing um, G to C we went from E minor to A minor we, if we hear G to C okay so we can hear that is perfect cadence it's happy and that's what we had before but then if we go from E minor to C major it's got a nostalgic feel to it and that's what we wanted from this piece because most of the time when we're sad we're thinking about something that's happened in the past um, yeah let's have a look at these strings there's both modulation um, and vibrato going on on most of these tracks um, except for the viola 
And the thing I want to want you to take away from this is the peaks and troughs. For most of these parts, what's happened is, um, or rather what I've done, is I've made sure that there are quiet sections and loud sections. And then inside the loud sections, there are still like sizable troughs where the dynamics go below what you might expect. So then when it rises back up again, what happens is you get the wow factor. You go, oh, right, oh, it went there. So whenever there's, um, you know, a hairpin that's rising, um, I'm really making sure I accentuate and go right to the top and I start as low as I can get away with. You know, it's only to the benefit of your piece that you do that. I also used Albion um, strings and I want to go in a little bit of detail about why I use Albion. So the rest of these strings, they are dry libraries. So Spitfire uh, Studio I'm using, which I absolutely love. I always use it. It just, it's one of those libraries I think that you can, um, you can put what you want into it and it'll come out. It takes a lot of work to get it there because it's so dry. It, but that means that when you're listening back to it, it's not it's not feeding your lies, which is a little bit what Albion 1 does because the strings are so wet in Albion. They don't lie to you, but they hide some of those things that are, um, that are wrong. If I take a look at this now and I just show you what I've done with Albion. I, I really had to work a lot harder with Albion um, simply because they're wet. So if we just take a little li listen to them. Yeah, so you can um, you can hear there that they're they're very washy. You know, there's 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 no um, no getting away from that. I needed to add some more of that detail in if I was to use, going to use that on its own. But actually what this is doing is exactly the same as what the Labs Piano is doing. It's just adding a little bit more um, girth to the sound. So if we take a listen again to this, um, I've muted Albion strings. Okay, so you can hear they're really dry, they're really crisp. Now I'll add Albion back in. So you can see there that that is, that is adding the weight that one library doesn't have that the other library does. So I would always say if you can and you've got the resources, try and blend those sounds together. But I'm going to, do, I'm, I'm going to explain the French horn, uh, tubers and, and woodwinds um, together because essentially what I'm doing is I'm mixing up, I'm orchestrating this for different um, effects. Um, and I want to show you the bassoon and the French horn first, because they're the in, they're the ones that are entering in with with the sound. I'll actually show you. So you can hear that on its own. It sounds quite gnarly, but but that's kind of what I wanted. Um, and, and this and this sound is comes from um, a specific a bassoon um, articulation, which is um, it's 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 a reed the way they they bite the reed I think. Put everything together sounds lovely. And then the French horn is doing exactly what what um, was happening before. It's just adding that that weight. Okay, and that's an orchestral tools French horn. Okay, um, same with the oboe and the piccolo. And I would advise as well that you, you try to keep your sessions as neat as you can. It doesn't have to be when you're composing it, but afterwards when you're, you're starting to um, move into the mixing phase, this is gonna really save you a lot of time because all your time really should be in the composition stage and making it sound good. Okay, and then uh, finally, you know, I've I've got the tuba, and um, I, I decided I, I love the tuba. I think it's such a melodic instrument, um, so I'm using uh, tuba and French horn here. But the tuba, I opted to use with a mute uh, because I had a good friend at university, and he used to play with a mute all the time. And the mutes are huge; they're really, really huge. Um, I just love the sound of it sounds really beautiful and it's so, so underused because people don't see it as a melodic instrument you see it as a bass instrument that's just going to do bassy stuff but this is the uh, the french horn and the tuba together <laughs> OK, 
okay so you can hear that's just really rich and it's full um, and you can see as it moves there's a transition here if I just play this small section And then we've got flute, bassoon, and French horn playing the melody in the, in the second half as well. And they're just typically, you know, using the same techniques. Um, and then we've got <clears throat> uh, piccolos playing um, octaves and fifths. Okay, so that's everything melodically, you know, and then, you, you know, we've got some harm, harmony in there as well. So if we were to uh, maybe just solo at these four, moving into this next section you'll hear that I'm actually using compound thirds. Okay, so you can hear there, what's happening is <clears throat> I've got the piccolo on the top line, I've got the flute on the bottom line, um, two octaves apart, and in between I've got that third, and that is pretty much it. Then I just use um, tubular bell, celeste and harp, just to add a little bit of finesse um, and the timpani. Um, so we're just going to go on to here now and um, quickly I'm going to show you how I've panned everything. And um, I've opted for this piece at least uh, to keep it traditional. You know, my strings, my violins are to the left. Uh, violas I've kept down the middle, cellos I've kept um, to the right, um, and then Albion strings is straight up the middle, and that's just to keep realism. You know, that's this is just another way that you can keep um, your pieces sounding more realistic, and also it means that you don't have to make too many decisions about where am I going to pan something. Um, if you're keeping to how something would normally be seated on an orchestral stage, you know, then then it's going to sound great, you know, and, and you because you're not having to think about that as much. The only discrepancy I will say is that the Celestin harp, so I've put the, the harp here all the way to the left, which is right, but the Celeste should probably be around about there on, on, on the scoring stage. Um, I've kept it down the middle um, simply because it sounds good there, um, and then I've balanced it out with the tubular bells. Um, as you can see, this week I've done nothing in terms of mixing and that is intentional because the next video is going to be all about how to mix to make this sound as good as it possibly can be. Um, that concludes today's look at how I orchestrate um, and automate all of, my, um, all of my tracks in this style of music in a sad piece. So um, yeah, you'll see me again on Sunday, hopefully, when I upload my next video. Um, but until then, um, if you enjoyed it, then please leave um, a message in the, the bottom and uh, li like it if you liked it, obviously. And um, yeah, if you're new here, then welcome. Uh, it's great to have you as part of this community. Uh, make sure that you click that subscribe if you found this useful. Uh, so see you later guys.